relationship t between Bodhi and Utah is a unique one, and we do take that generally from the original film, that Utah uh, is delves into the world undercover uh, that Bodhi belongs in, and it's a world that Utah came from before, so he understands it deeply. He's not uh, immersed into a world that he's unaware of, but it becomes uh, much deeper and much more intense than he could ever imagine. Um, Bodhi sees quite a bit in Utah, and I think uh, even if he has suspicions of who he might be, he has a deeper sense of wanting to save this person. I think uh, Bodhi was like Utah in the past and has expanded beyond it in his own worldview and his sense of purpose. And I think he wants to, like a big brother, wants to guide Utah along that path. And ultimately he does. They both get very close and find out they're very much of the same spirit and are deeply connected as individuals, both in terms of their intensity and their, uh, and their wants. But in the end, uh, it's Utah who has to step away from that and uh, has a different true north in terms of his moral compass than does Bodhi. But we wound up working with 11 different crews in the different countries. And whenever we showed up in a country, we had a brand new crew. Um, and we started all over again. So it's a very unique film in the fact that uh, it wasn't one film or one point of view, but the point of view of many international uh, crew members as we went, uh, which was always fascinating for uh, myself, the actors, and the handful of people that traveled to carry the through line of the film and uh, make sure we expressed that through the people that we were working with. Um, different styles of work in different countries uh, with different people, uh, so it was wonderful. Uh, I would have to add it up, but I'm pretty sure we had between 50 and 60 camera operators. I had at least seven gaffers, um, and so on. We had amazingly uh, varied crew throughout. There's always difficulties in shooting in real locations. Uh, just the idea of getting to some of the places is uh, challenging. Uh, and the techniques of which we had to do it. We worked at the top of mountains in ice, we worked uh, on water, and we worked in jungles. So for the jungle in Venezuela, uh, we were in an extraordinarily remote part of Venezuela. And there's, of course, uh, not just the politics of getting into Venezuela and making that work, but uh, bringing everything with us. And expedition style, we all camped uh, at camps that were essentially four and a half to six hours upriver uh, from a remote location with an airstrip but no roads leading to it, uh, uh, isolated island uh, in the middle of Venezuela that then leads upriver to Angel Falls. And ultimately, everything had to come up. I dug out canoes with small motors on the back, two-stroke motors, and uh, a little bit uh, lifted in by helicopter. So we literally had to create a camp for over 100 people in the middle of the jungle both at the base of the river of Angel Falls, on top of Angel Falls, and then a remote rock face that we also used for climbing. While we were in Italy working uh, for the snowboard, extreme snowboard unit, uh, that was extremely challenging because the only way to get to these locations was by helicopter. So uh, that was true for many of the locations around the world that we went, but in Italy in particular, they were hot landings on top of uh, um, ice and very steep peaks that had sheer drop-offs on any side. Uh, so very dangerous location and uh, very limited windows of opportunity to get to the top of mountains that they weren't closed out from uh, fog where visibility was down and thus uh, impossible to either get to or to get off of. So that was a big challenge. Uh, in all those countries, we also had to use mountain safety, which was a huge part of this film. Uh, to keep everyone safe. Everyone was roped in constantly, so even the act of uh, trying to drink water or uh, have a pee break uh, was uh, in sometimes a very challenging, uh, dangerous event. We did everything we can to be as safe as possible on this film in terms of having rescue helicopters and medical staff trained on set. I'm actually a wilderness first responder as well, so I have medical training to take care of people on set as well. Um, but regardless of being as safe as we could, of course, there were nicks and bruises here and there. Um, we had uh, a couple injuries, uh, Lori Tanner probably being our greatest injury, unfortunately, who went off of a wave in Chopu uh, in Tahiti. Uh, and when he went off the wave, he hit the reef that's right below it, which is the greatest danger of Chopu, and wound up breaking his jaw and taking some lacerations on it. Luckily, he's fine, uh, and that was the greatest injury we had on the film. Some of the athletes that we used, Jeb Corliss, uh, extraordinary wingsuiter and an amazing daredevil, and uh, was a, a great collaborator for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, Jeb uh, led us to Wallenstad, Switzerland, to fly the crack. It's a place that we didn't scout anywhere else in the world to do it. Jeb told us where the place was that 
only place in the world where you can actually fly below the Earth's surface at 145 miles an hour. And uh, he has flown it um, extraordinarily, and he was our lead in that and putting the team together to do it. The second reason that Jeb was extraordinary is his psyche and who he is as a person, his personal philosophy of life, which is rather extraordinary, uh, is very much the basis for Bodhi in Utah in this version of the film. Much of the dialogue and uh, the weight behind who they are comes from Jeb. Chris Sharma is uh, still considered the best climber in the world uh, and also has an extraordinary philosophy. If, uh, if Jeb Corliss represents uh, the yang of uh, Bodhi and Utah, Chris Sharma represents the ying. Uh, they both go hand in hand and have different ways of doing things. Um, Chris is extraordinary on many levels. The level of climbing uh, was raised uh, the scoring system of what a great climb is uh, only went to a certain level until Chris started climbing and the best climbers in the world realized he was doing things that no one else could do so they raised the level of climbing for Chris. Um, he's an extraordinary man doing extraordinary work and also as Chris puts it um, he really considers himself much more of a creative soul than an athlete. When he looks at something what the line is for him is something that needs to be discovered uh, it's revealed through nature, you find it, and he finds the most beautiful way. The athletes were not just stunt people for us, they were much more than that. The athletes were embodied the characters. So Utah and Bodhi are not just Edgar and Luke who did an extraordinary job bringing them to life, but so did Chris Sharma and Jeb Corliss and Laird Hamilton and Xavier Del Rue. They became them. Uh, both in spirit, both in the conversations I had with them prior that became part of the dialogue of the film, uh, and also by actually physically portraying them in the film. So when actors see Utah and see Bodhi, they're seeing much more than just a single actor. They're seeing quite a bit more depth and extraordinariness than is even possible by a single person. Um, the athletes were such a collaboration on this project, and that was what was different about this film.